Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now I thought it would be interesting to start checking out more lesser known graphics card brands here on the channel in an attempt to ask and answer the question, is it legit? To ease into this series, I opted for something lower end and less expensive, a Max Sun RX 550 that can be found on AliExpress or on Amazon for a bit more money. If you don't mind waiting a bit longer and saving some more cash, AliExpress is the way to go and I've been tempted by quite a lot of PC parts on there recently. I'd not heard of Max Sun until about a month ago, but let's get this thing opened and begin our journey down the road of either pleasant surprises or huge disappointments. Starting with the packaging and the box is pretty eye-catching. Always nice to see a bit of box art these days, even if it's not quite as over the top and exciting as it used to be. Opening up the box and we've got details of the warranty and what I assume are the minimum suggested requirements for the card. This 550 comes with a three year warranty according to the paperwork and the box. Nothing else in here, just a couple of thin foam pads and the card itself enclosed in this padded packaging. After sliding the Max Sun 550 out of its protective sleeve, we get our first look at this entry level card. The cooler of which is pretty simple by design and not too dissimilar to that of the power color variant that I tested in the past. This card requires no external PSU connector and at around 60 to 70 pounds on AliExpress, it could be ideal for anyone looking to upgrade an old and questionably powered pre-built PC. On the back of the PCB we've got the product name and specs and at the end we have a DVI, HDMI and DisplayPort connector. First things first and we've got to check that it works and it is what it says it is. I slotted it into my MSI motherboard with my i5-13400F and 16 gigs of DDR4 and the system fired up without any issues. Windows detected my previous AMD driver installation and after opening GPU-Z, I was happy to confirm that we did indeed have a four gigabyte RX 550. Nothing seems out of the ordinary as far as the specifications go and clicking the look up button took us to the generic 550 page on Tech Power Up. Now after doing a bit more research on Max Sun, it seems as though they are well known in Asia, mainly catering to the Chinese market. I found a few different graphics card models online, though rarely any being sold here in the UK, except for the odd card that's popped up on Amazon. I'll definitely have to check out a few different ones if I can find them, so if anyone from Max Sun does happen to be watching this well, please get in touch. Back to this one specifically then, the Max Sun 550. It's definitely legitimate, but it is still a 550, a card that was low end on arrival and most certainly even less capable now. That said, being the four gig model, I do hold out a little more hope for it. And before benchmarking anything, I was even able to overclock it by maxing out the clock speed slider and turning the memory frequency up to 1800 megahertz. It did get a little bit louder of course, going from 30% fan speed at idle with the stock clocks to 36% speed with this overclock. In games, it'll get louder still, but hopefully not too hot. With these increased clock speeds, I found that we were able to squeeze around four to eight more frames from the Max Sun 550, which is a massive help for an entry level part like this. These improvements won't save us in every game, but they will certainly help, especially in titles that are bordering on 30 FPS. Now in all the games I tested, I noticed that the card didn't really exceed 25 watts of power. I'm not sure if this is a usual thing with the RX 550 because it is and always has been a very low power GPU. Even with the overclock here, it is really quite power consumption friendly, I guess you could say. And at 1080p in our first game Cyberpunk today, with this overclock, it was able to hit at least 30 FPS, albeit with FSR 2.1 enabled and set to the performance preset. This is of course with the 
lowest in-game settings as well. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2, the 2022 version of course at 1080p, runs with over 60 frames per second, albeit with FSR 1.0 set to performance. This is also with the minimum preset and the anti-aliasing quality is set to high. The average was actually 76 frames per second. Now I like to always try and achieve 60 where possible in these online competitive shooters, so it's nice to see that we were exceeding that and even our 1% low was coming quite close to that too. With these settings and this frame rate I was able to remain somewhat competitive even getting a few kills under my belt. Now Fallout 4 is an older game that I thought would do better than this at 1080p with the medium preset and we hit 52 FPS. In order to hit the 60 FPS cap or beyond 60 if you've uncapped it you could drop to the low preset but I think you're still going to experience dips below 60 FPS so I'd suggest either 900p or lower for this one. This is more demanding than it looks, let's say, especially with older and lower end hardware, but I think this is definitely more than playable, especially when something like the PS4 still runs it at 30 FPS. So if you're getting into PC gaming and you purchase one of these cheap 550s, you're going to have a much better time here than you would on previous gen consoles, at least in those older games. Elden Ring at 720p now, we've had to drop to 720p for this one with the low preset and the high textures with AA set to high as well. Now at 1080p there were a lot of drops below 30fps, 900p exactly the same, but at 720p not only were we able to exceed 30fps but the game was a lot smoother with 48 on average and a decent 1% low as well. The 0.1% low wasn't even that bad. Now, the difference between keeping everything at low and switching the textures and anti-aliasing to high is literally nothing. There is no performance difference, so I thought we may as well opt for the high textures, something we can do thanks to the 4 gigs of GDDR5. Marvel Spider-Man Remastered also had to be run at 720p. You can, of course, use FSR 2.1 here and set it to performance, but I found that the game ran slightly worse at 1080p with FSR at the lowest preset than it did at 720p with the lowest preset. And this actually gave us a slightly better image quality overall, so I decided to remain with native 720. Doing this gave us 44 as an average with pretty decent percentile lows. That 1% low especially was better than I was anticipating. The Witcher 3 since its next gen patch has become a lot more demanding but at 900p the old sweet spot with medium settings and TAAU with sharpening set to low we did exceed 30 FPS. Now the water seems to be quite a demanding setting here. I should have dropped the quality of that I believe that's an individual setting, but even with medium across the board, we were able to hit at least 30. In busier cities as well, you're going to see a few more dips and drops, especially with those percentile lows, but for the most part, the Maxun 550 held up fairly well, and the game still looks pretty decent, especially after its last upgrade. Finally then we have Red Dead Redemption 2 which can be problematic for older and lower end cards. My go to sort of fix or scenario here for older cards is to just use ultra textures and switch everything else to the lowest. I also keep TAA at medium as I've done here. Um, this meant that we were able to hit 38 FPS in combination with FSR 2.0 and set to the performance mode. Of course FSR is a bit of a lifesaver when it comes to these older cards, to be honest. Yeah, ultra textures with everything else at its lowest in Red Dead Redemption 2 still means that you're going to get a pretty decent looking game. And it means that performance is going to be a lot better than if you were targeting, say, console quality settings. But there we go, the Max Sun RX 550, it's a legit card, just not very common in Europe and America and on other continents. Big in China, big in Asia, but you don't really see them over here. And perhaps that's a bit of a shame. Thank you very much for watching then. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.